Hey guys, Brian here, and today we are at the Crane Snowmobile Museum here in Lancaster, New Hampshire, and we have a special treat coming up for you. Come on in. Paul, I'm Brian. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice to meet you, Brian. Folks, this is Paul Crane. This is his museum. And today we're going to learn a little bit about what he has in his museum. Um, Paul, what got you into the snowmobile? The reason I got into the snowmobile and everything is I was working for Timbaland machines and I was selling bombardier logging equipment. And all of a sudden, Armand Bombardier called my boss, Bob Bottoms. And what happened then was he says, Come up. I want you to look at a prototype that I think we're going to be selling for recreation, not logging equipment or ski area equipment. Yeah. So that's how I got started, really. Well, I grew up in Lancaster. Never dreamed that, you know, I'd work at 19 years old for. Timberland Machines and Bob Bottoms put me to work, but I, I lived in Lancaster most all my life. There was four of us in town here that had 61 skidoos and we rode around all the time. People would stop over the field over here and look at you know, stop because they've never seen a snow machine. Yeah. So that's how I got started. But I'm partial to the skidoo because I'm the one that rode on the first skidoo in Canada and in the United States. Yeah, so I'm partial on the skidoo. <laughs> I'll let you pick the five you want. <laughs> All right, so Paul, there's a sign on your website, and I think on one of your signs, that says Home of the Blue Goose. Right. This is the Blue Goose. It was made by Kettle Aircraft Company in uh, Pennsylvania. On the Blue Goose, um, there's approximately 47 of these. That that's, the that's what I have the history of it, is yeah. 47 of them were made. So this is pretty rare. It's a rare sled. Are there any of these sleds in here, including the Blue Goose, you know, just for the audience watching at home, is any of this for sale? No. So none of this is for sale, it's strictly museum? Strictly museum, the only way I will sell one of these is if I can find one older. There was some handwritten paperwork that came with this sled, and who was that from, Paul? That's the owner, but I can't pronounce his name, it's right on the, on the seat. Ford's sent three of these to Kingsfield Ford dealer in Maine. So I have the history on all three of them. This here was at a farm, 90% of its life, from the third owner to it. And it's no, it's all original. So, you were, is it fair to say, you were one of the first people to ride a skidoo in the United States? I was the first. You were the first. Yeah. And that happened here in Lancaster? In Lancaster. Yeah. That's amazing. When did the museum officially open its doors? I believe it was eight years ago. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. And um, how many sleds do you have inside this museum? This museum, I have a, a hundred and twenty-eight. Might, I might be one hundred twenty-nine. I, I 
probably could be 130 because I haven't counted it. Okay, so uh, almost 130 units. Yeah. And you have others in storage? Well, I have another 40 sleds in storage at my house. So you have so many in here, but yet I'm, I'm pinning you down to only picking four. We have two left. Can you pick? Can you pick two more? Yeah, I'll pick. Uh, I'll pick two of them in one spot. This this is a '68 motor ski, which is made by Bombardier, and it's the first independent sled. Now, this has never been raced. Uh, and then the next one is the bullet, which the year that they bought out, Skidoo bought out motor ski. And this here was really quite a competition to them. They, these are very rare. These are two of your favorites. Right. And they're both racing sleds. Right. And back in the day, could you buy something like this off the floor or have these been completely modified? Uh, these are both the way they came from the factory. Okay, so that was factory that, back in the day. That was factory. Okay. Of course, all the factories then did something for the oval racing. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you to travel back in time a little bit. What were these worth back in the day? Uh, Ballpark. Pretty, pretty reasonable. Like that one, they were probably around dealer because they gave them to you $1,500 to $1,600 for that one there. And this one somewhere around the same price. Okay. And fast forward to 2021. Yeah. If somebody, I know they're not for sale, but if somebody could buy one, what would these be worth today? I had a Canadian come in on the Motor C Supersonic. He laid down $100 bills to $20,000. And he says, I'll give you that and you can go find another one. And I told him, if you could find another one, you wouldn't be offering me that. But I've been offered more than that for it. Okay, so that is quite the investment. Uh, that's amazing. It's just, you know, we realize none of these are for sale, but we do like to know, you know, everybody likes to know what you pay, what they're worth. That's just the way humans work, I think. Uh, that's amazing. From $1,600 to well over 20000 valued at. Uh, and would you consider that original condition? That or is original. That's original. It's never been raced either. It's never been raced, never been no. redone. It, it is it, what it is. All four of these, the two skidoos and these two here, have never been raced. Yep. This here was made by Johnson and Evan Wood in Peterborough, Ontario. And they made 92 chassis. Yeah, this is Mitch Rosebrook, or Ed Roberts, Ed Rosebrook, whichever you want to call him. Okay. He's my partner in, in this Hall of Fame. What is this? Yeah, uh, it, uh, it basically, uh, in New England, uh, racing started uh, back in the early 60s, you know. Uh, in fact, Paul was probably involved in a couple of the first uh, Grand Prix. And uh, it lasted maybe 20 years in New England, and uh, then it kind of went away. Uh, and about the only major racing uh, after that was out, done out in the Midwest. Basically, Eagle River was uh, you know, always uh, a big event every year. Uh, but it, it stopped here in New England. And uh, for years, nobody ever thought about it. And uh, Paul and I uh, were together on the committee for the uh, 50th reunion of the Grand Prix back in 2014. And at that time, uh, we invited uh, a lot of the uh, original racers that raced in the Grand Prix to come and, uh, and in fact we have a, a photo over there of uh, everyone lined up out on the racetrack during intermission and uh, you know Paul and I got to thinking that gee you know nobody ever recognized these guys from the east really. Uh, the only eastern racer in the Midwest Hall of Fame is Herb Yancey. Rightly so, Herb was probably, uh, without a doubt, the best, one of the best racers in the world. And he's an independent. And, yeah, and he was an independent. He, he won uh, at Eagle River, he, he won a snow pro race against the factory teams. Uh, he's on the, he's number one in probably everybody's show list. But, 
other people needed to be recognized too. And uh, so Paul and I decided that we would try to uh, uh, have a Hall of Fame here in the East. This was the, this here was the prototype that I run. That's all plywood. Let's get a really long ski. Yeah, it's all wood. You were inducted into the Hall of Fame. What Hall of Fame? At the International Hall of Fame. So where's that? That's out in Eagle River. Eagle River, okay. Yeah. And you were inducted in 2015? Yes. Is that pretty special to you? Yes, it really is. Yep. Were you expecting that? Not really. No. no, if it wasn't for Midge Rosebrook, I, I wouldn't be in there because I, I never thought of even thinking about it. He's the, yeah. he's the one that did it. Yeah, yeah. that's excellent. Yeah. But I just, it's just like me riding the first skidoo. I didn't say nothing about the first skidoo for years that I rode the first. Yeah. yeah. And is this for racing or is this just for... It's promotional and, uh, and racing, I have it. So it's kind yeah. of a combo, combo. entry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. Well, folks, again, I'm here with Paul Crane. This is his museum. And Paul, it has been a pleasure to meet you today. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, have thank you for thank taking you. the time to show yeah. us everything yeah. here in your wonderful museum. And cool. uh, we wish you luck in the future. Good, thank you. Thank you. So folks, if you're looking for something to do while you're up in this area, Lancaster, New Hampshire, stop by Crane Snowmobile Museum. We're here at 172 Main Street in Lancaster, and this here will not disappoint you.